In this video, we're going to take a look at translating propositional logic statements. We're going to first look at how to translate English sentences into propositional logic. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our statement and identify any atomic propositions, which essentially means I'm going to look at my sentence and look at what would be propositions. So if I go to the store or the movies, I won't do my homework. So to me, I see I go to the store and then I go to the movies and do my homework. So I'm going to let P represent I go to the store. And it's important to understand that there are a lot of correct ways to translate these. This I'm showing you one correct way. So P is I go to the store. Q is I go to the movies. And R is I do my homework. Now it is a good idea. So notice here I'm looking at I won't do my homework. I'm not going to represent R as I won't do my homework. We always represent the proposition as the positive, And then if it's a negative, we just negate it. So the first thing I did now is I looked at my P, Q, and R. And now I want to identify any logical connectives. And remember, those connectives are negations or disjunctions or conjunctions or implications, any of those things that we just got done learning about in our last couple of videos. So what I see is I see an if then, and notice there is no then, but here is where that then would go. I see an or, and I see a negation. So let's take a look at how I might represent this using PQR. Now keep in mind, when you are translating, you need to write this. You need to verify or identify what proposition represents what phrase. So if I go to the store or to the movies, so I'm going to start with go to the store or the movies. That would be go to the store or go to the movies. So I'm saying if I do that, and now I'm going to say this is an if then. So if that occurs, then what happens? Then I won't do my homework. So R is do my homework. So I'm going to say not R. So the way I could translate this is P or Q, if P or Q, then not R. Here are three practice I would like you to try. And I want you to notice that one and two are almost exactly the same. Uh, so we'll talk about those differences. Keep in mind, I am going to ask you to pause and try these questions on your own, but it's okay if you don't know how to do this yet. Whenever I ask you to pause and try one on your own, it's just to challenge yourself and see how you're doing so that you know whether or not you totally get it or you need a little bit of extra practice. Um, I also want to point out that there's not just one correct way to do this. It completely depends on how you define your propositions. Um, so the way that I'm going to do it may or may not be the exact way that you are going to do it. That doesn't mean that you're wrong. It could be that you're right. You've just done it in another way. So if you would, press pause now and try this question. When you are ready, press play to see how you did. So when I'm looking at this first question, it says you can get a free sandwich on Thursday if you buy a sandwich or a cup of soup. Notice it's just an if here. And if I wanted to rewrite this in if-then form, this would be the hypothesis. And my first statement would actually be the conclusion. So if I were to rewrite it, it would be, if you buy a sandwich or a cup of soup, then you can get a free sandwich on Thursday. So let's talk about how we can rewrite this using propositions. First of all, it's important that you define your propositions. So I'm going to start with the part that I've underlined in yellow, which is my hypothesis, because keep in mind, it's always in an implication, hypothesis implies conclusion. So I'm going to say, let P represent, I buy a sandwich,
and Q represent I buy a cup of soup, which means the part that I have written in yellow can be now represented using P and Q as I buy a sandwich or I buy a cup of soup. And that's going to imply my conclusion. What is my conclusion? My conclusion says, and I'm going to call that R, I get a free sandwich on Thursday. Now, some would say you should split that up into I get a free sandwich and it's Thursday um, or some other way. I'm going to stick with R being I get a free sandwich on Thursday and therefore that is my solution. Now, let's take a look at question one versus question two. What is the difference between question one and question two? I have only if rather than if. So the only thing that's going to happen here that's different, and again, you have to define what's going to represent what, and so I'm going to just cheat and say, hey, I'm using the exact same propositions. So just pretend I took the time to rewrite those. What's going to happen here is because it's an only if, I am now going to have if R, then P or Q, which means I got a free sandwich or I get a free sandwich implies that I bought a sandwich or a cup of soup. So that's the only if is that you have to do it in that opposite order. So if it's an if, the second part is that hypothesis and the first is the conclusion, only if it's sort of more in the format that we would be used to. Um, the last part, let's go ahead and take a look at what this would be in if-then form. So it says the automated reply can't be sent when the system is full. So how would I think about that? I would say if the system is full, then the automated reply can't be sent. So if I let, so this, let me use my same coloring system. So I'm thinking about this as if the system is full, then the automated reply can't be sent. So if I let P represent the system is full, and Q represent the automated reply can be sent, remember, because we always use the positive when we're doing propositions, then my new statement is going to be, if the system is full, then the automated reply cannot be sent. So if P, then not Q. Most of the time when you're doing translating, you will go from English to a propositional logic statement. Um, but just to make sure we're tracking, this is another direction that we could go. So if I give you the propositional statement and I ask you to write it in English. So here I have Q represents you can ride the roller coaster. R represents you are under four feet tall and S represents you are older than 16 years old. And then I've given you R or not S implies not Q. So what might be helpful to do is to say if R or not S, then not Q. So that might be a way to help you because of course I want to write this as an English statement that makes sense. So now that I've replaced all of those connectives with English words, now I can just pop in the R and the S and the Q and it will make much more sense. So how would I write this? If R, so I'm going to replace R, if you are under four feet tall, or not S, so S is you are older than 16 years old. So I could either say 
or you are not older than 16 years old, or I could say you are younger than 16 years old, whichever is fine. If you are under four feet tall, or I'm gonna say younger than 16 years old, and above this I'm just going to put not older so that you remember you could write it either way if you were under four feet tall or younger than 16 years old then not Q so Q is you can ride the roller coaster then I could say then you cannot ride the roller coaster Easy as that. Now, this little uh, method that I used here, you certainly can use that going in the other direction as well. That's not the way that I did it. But if you're struggling a little bit with how to translate, that might be a nice little segue into translating. Up next, we're going to take a look at solving logic puzzles.